in this video I will continue printing black and white. I want to see the limit, how much I can print from one solution and find down the better parameters for reproduction printing. Also I have a film which already have a great contrast and I want to print it on this highly contrast paper and see what is the maximum of the contrast. The film is actually Aqua Apex 100 film. Most of the people probably don't even know what is this film. I bought this film in a local supermarket and push it with a Cinesteel Mono Bath to create more contrast. Because initial idea for this negative for the project for Steinberg Z. This is local lake here near the Munich. And because initial plan was create a scans from these negatives, I tried to push the contrast as maximum as possible and create more greedy, grindy look and more texture and painting styles picture. So let's focus on the green on the first shot, what I lot in my larger. And I'm still working with a small paper size, but unfortunately the small paper size give you exactly the same amount of trouble and hustle with the printing, with the test printing. So probably it's not the best way how to print casually. But I think if you have a contact sheet print from all of your negatives on the same film, you can easily with the one correction, even with the aperture, get the right exposure. And you can basically print in one evening or 36 shots from the same negative. This is actually what I want to experiment with today. Because last time I used small amount of solution to just make one quick development in my drum. Today I continue to using the same solution and just want to take a look how much developments of the small 10 by 15 centimeter print I can make with the same solution. As I mentioned in the previous videos, I developed the standard black and white process, so the paper developer for 50 seconds. Next step is a 15 seconds stop with exactly the same rotation procedure. And the last step is a fixer. And the next thing what I want to test, I put one sheet of paper inside my save box and I want to test if it survives or it's actually having light leaks and the whole paper without the bags is ruined there. And as you can see from my first test print, the paper is totally black, so it means it's completely fogged. And my safe box without the black coverage on the paper doesn't really work. So I reprint that same test print and get the first initial result. And as you can see here, for two reasons, actually my exposure on the print doesn't really match what they print before. So first of all, it's completely different negative material. And secondly, what I also thinking about, it's actually the developer of the paper. Because I already have almost 10 rotations, it can be that it's not enough of developer material in the solution. And you can literally see the degradation of the solution from one print to another. So if you're using the bigger size of solution like half liter, one liter, honestly it's much better because your degradation of the solution it's more gradient or you even probably don't really see the degradation of solution at all. At some point it will be noticeable but before you see it, it's like a long time. And why it's important? It's just because you have the prints. For example, here I print the test print. And from one test print to another test print, your quality of print, exposure of the print and other parameters can change dramatically if using a small amount of solution. So you need to have a two options or use a standard for like three, five developments and discard the solution or use a bigger volume of the solution and basically mix the old solution inside the new solution. So for the next development, I take a one finished print and make a second test print with the exposures. 
So this is additional experiment what I want to make with this drum so I can develop in the same time up to four small prints. So I have a one final print and the test print for the next print. And because I have a lifting technology inside my enlarger, it's much easier to switch the negative from one to another. And I make a step with a five second increment and it looks like my middle section of the 15 seconds, it looks correct for the exposure for this small brand. First thing what I can say, it's probably for my taste too much contrast for this particular negative. So I think if you're using standard HP5 negative or standard process on the black and white, you will never have this amount of problems what I'm having here. But this is actually my idea for this print. I just want a greedy, really dark and contrast look. It was really contrasty day and I care more about geometry, about the grain and about the texture in the sky and the shadows. So now after this experiment we can dry the both prints and check if I need adjustments for the print number 3. The first print actually looks fine, uh, but the blacks looks a little bit muddy and grayish and not really black. And also because my easel for 10 by 15 millimeters is really light, I usually tend to move it so my cropping is not really consistent all the time. And as you can see here on development number 12, I already have a little bit of mismatch with the blacks, so it's not really correspond to my test print. So I think the point of 10 prints for this small amount of rotations and solutions is really a good result. And I want to make a new solutions to just compare two results, what I have from previous one to the new one. For this Yobo drum I actually multiplying the volume by 10 or in some cases to 50. So for example here I just making the 100 milliliter of solution. It's a bit more precise and a little bit easier to make and store in my bottles. This particular method it's actually allowing you to use fresh solutions for your final prints only. Because you're not developing in a trace, you don't have really contaminated solution. So it means you can start with a 50 milliliters of a fresh solution and develop even bigger prints to get the same result but with a completely fresh solutions. It's quite handy if you print in a small apartment or if you really care about the precision in your work so you can always make the same fresh solutions and reproduce the final results. And as you can see with the fresh solutions on this particular print, I have much more exposure. So these two prints actually show that my chemistry is quite degraded over time. And I really like the texture on this particular shot, so I will keep it. And it's not really a big difference in exposure as you can see, but it's a big difference in depth of blacks. As you can see on the first picture, it's more gray than black. And on a new picture, the depth of blacks is higher, so we have not really the same contrast and it's not actually the change in exposure, it's just a change in the black rendition. So for small prints, you can actually use this quick loading method on the Durst M605. So you can also advance in the same particular negative or you even can use the roll of the negative. So let's check the grain once again and make a focusing and I want to continue with the next print and I make a rendition with the different exposures but unfortunately for this print it was anyway too much light so I just stopped down the aperture one stop and proceed with the next printing. And for some particular negatives it's much better to make a steps from left to right and not from top to bottom. But as you can see I make exactly the same steps with the time of 5 seconds. And this rendition is actually in the range what I want to see. So the 5 seconds it's a bit too bright and I'm losing the texture in the sky. So I will go with a 10 seconds exposure for this particular print. 
And yes, I know, I lost all the details in the shadows. And yes, probably the contrast on the picture looks a little bit too aggressive. But what I like about the black and white so far, it's printing process, so I literally don't really understand uh, why you need to scan the black and white. So it's much more fun with the printing and the result of your print is completely different and it's like additional expression of your artistic vision. And yes, you also can scan this particular picture and make it like digital scan from the print. I'm actually quite curious because the black and white is so accessible for everyone and it's so easy to print and so easy to manage the whole darkroom setup. So I will make for sure more experience with the black and white in future. But for now, I'm waiting for a little bit of update in my darkroom. And I will continue with my color adventure with my new paper from Fuji Color. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.